If you are considering moving to St. George, Utah in 2023, there is a great chance that at least one, if not all of these questions had crossed your mind at one point or another. Or if it has not yet, perhaps it may be a good idea to keep these things in mind. As we turn to the internet and ask those that moved here recently about the top five unanswered questions that they wish they knew the answers to prior to moving to St. George, response was tremendous. St. George metro area has been growing like crazy over the last few years, and the amount of responses that we received was incredible. So this is not just my thoughts or Michonne's thoughts, but rather experiences of others that have moved into the area over the last few years. And some of the folks that have lived here their entire life, those are just some of the observations, and we hope they come in helpful for your relocation journey, especially if you're sitting around and thinking if, if Southern Utah may be a place for you. So these top five questions, and we're gonna go, we're gonna go through in a bit more detail, but I just wanna give you guys kind of a common consensus out of 198 responses that we have received so far, the top five were rental availability and overall housing costs and price to wage ratio when purchasing uh, a home here in St. George, Utah and working locally. How did everyone survive this long without knowing how to drive? I like that one. <laughs> so it's not just me. Low local wages, flashing turn arrow and roundabouts everywhere, and the street names, they're impossible to remember. I struggle with that one as well. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is the weather. So let's check out some of these responses and Michelle and I will kind of go through and, and share our reactions to them as well. Folks, real quick, and then we're going to get right back into the content. Michonne and I created this channel in order to help people just like you relocate to Southern Utah, because we know exactly how challenging it can be. So if you're even remotely considering moving to St. George, Utah, or anywhere in Utah for that matter, reach out to us today, because we cannot reach out to you. We run a number one relocation team that services the entire state. Call us, text us, or email us anytime, even on the weekends. So you you asked, scroll up, let's see, if at one point or another you moved to St. George, Utah from somewhere else, what were some of the questions that you wish you had answered prior to moving here or struggled to have answered? So 183 responses. Let's go through some of them. We won't bore you guys to death with all of them. Kyla said, it was really hard to find a rental ahead of time without being here in person, which just didn't work out timing wise. Now, rental availability kind of goes back and forth in Southern Utah. And if you're planning on moving into the area and you plan on renting for a while, we would highly recommend definitely planning ahead. And uh, typically landlords try to try to have some seasonality and, and leases. So usually springtime, summertime, you're going to see a lot more vacancies because people have a lot more turnovers. Mm -hmm. Some of it is related to the school season for those tenants that are going to school and for those tenants that have children that go to school. So usually right around the school season, like once the school is out or right before the school begins is when you're going to see a lot more rental availability. But otherwise, if you're trying to move in a dead of winter or in the middle of summer, um, there will be few and far between rentals and typically supply versus demand. So... Well, and it's kind of hard when you're moving from out of state because a lot of time they're um, verifying your if you don't have a job here yet. Yeah, income income and employment verification is something that's very important, mm -hmm. and usually you can overcome most of those things. Um, you know, if if you don't yet have employment, sometimes you can. And, and again, this is something that's up to each individual property manager, so we can't speak for everybody. But Michelle and I do a little bit of property management as well. And typically, if if income is an issue or credit is an issue, there are ways to work around it, and most of it could get satisfied with a larger security deposit, That's true. which which gives the landlord, um, you know, peace of mind that you're committed. Okay, Marcy, pay to housing price ratio is way off and doesn't seem to ever get better. That's unfortunately been uh, a rising concern. I don't think it's just St. George, Utah. It's pretty much everywhere in the yeah. nation. With the current interest rates, I think I saw this stat somewhere that with the current interest rates, over 75% of all Americans that work kind of entry-level jobs or jobs with lower pay are no longer able to qualify to purchase a home just based on debt-to-income ratio. I could see that with the way inflation's been and everything. 
yeah, prices are high and so are the interest rates. So be mindful. I would say when moving to St. George, if, if you're able to keep a high paying job from uh, wherever you're, you're coming from, that's usually that that's been working out really well for a lot of our clients, uh, local employment can be a little bit tricky. Like there's not a ton of um, tech companies or factories. There's really no manufacturing in St. George. So your typical like hospitality uh, jobs, you know, like you could comfortably survive in a big city by being a bartender. It may be a little bit tougher to do that here because even though it seems like every venue is constantly busy, uh, it, it doesn't seem like you would get the the big city wages and tips that you would expect like in Las Vegas or Chicago or LA. So making a living here can be a bit tricky. And of course, you know, it, it all depends on what you're equipped with. So if you have any special skills or talents or certifications or licenses, seems like you'll do well just about anywhere. But even like starting your own business. So there was on the St. George word of mouth, the same page, there was a family that moved here and she was baking and selling the banana bread. And, and then every, it's been, she sells out every, oh, yeah. every day. And they're, they're trying to use those funds to start their own business venture, but I mean, you just you go onto some of these local pages and you just promote your business and usually it's the saying job. hustle or struggle goes a long way. Yeah. Okay, Jennifer, can we buy beer on Sunday? LOL. Seriously, we almost drove to Mesquite. We were in a panic. <laughs> so uh, that's an interesting point. Liquor laws in Southern Utah have actually changed quite a bit uh, since I moved here ten years ago. And can you buy beer on Sunday? Mm, well. The liquor well, stores Costco, are closed. Liquor stores are closed, but Costco now sells, um, they don't sell hard liquor, but well, they sell beer. You can go to the gas station. Yeah. Yeah, you could definitely buy. You can go to the grocery store. Yeah. Okay. yeah you could definitely buy beer. We're acting Sunday. like, where is it? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we hardly ever drink, so. Um, well, I don't drink. Miss Hansen said, have never lived with cockroaches or wolf spiders or earwigs, but was totally thrilled to exchange mosquitoes for them uh we wondered why the train doesn't go through here and it was really strange that it didn't cool off during the night during football season I had to get used to the days upon days maybe even weeks without even a cloud in the sky that has changed Mm -hmm. I learned that desert camping is pretty amazing. Been here for 23 years. Not sure if we would have moved here now, but also find myself thinking home is better when we travel most places. Michelle and I feel the same way. Like if, if we travel anywhere, St. George is yeah. always home and it, it's always better. Like I haven't, when I, when I lived in Wisconsin, I felt like every time I visited Illinois, I felt like I didn't want to go back. Uh, when I lived in North Carolina, I would go just about anywhere outside of North Carolina and feel like I would rather be there than North Carolina. But Southern Utah and St. George definitely feels like home. And I'm glad that it feels like home to so many yeah. people. Uh, and pests are not an issue if you at least keep up on your pest control. So we don't do it inside our home because we've got, you know, baby and dogs, pets. And so we do it outside quarterly. This um, this season, it's it's we've had to do it like every two months, but we don't ever really see and if you guys already moved here and you're looking for a good uh, pest control referral, contact us. We yeah. have we have a really great contact. And yeah, I think with most large or small pests, really a lot of those small nuisance type pests, the, the challenge with not eliminating those from your property is that they become food for larger, bigger things. Yeah. Uh, so then you have lizards and snakes. And, and this is like... This is something that's commonly told to keep people away from the area. Uh, if my one of my biggest phobias is snakes and don't like reptiles in general. So trust me, if if snakes were an issue in Southern Utah, I would no longer be leaving here. I mean, they're definitely out in the wild. They can be found. And if you don't eliminate the source of their food within your home, um, that's, that's something that you're going to have problems with. Well, I've and, lived here my whole life and I can count on one hand how many snakes I've seen, even out out in the wild like yeah. you'll see little garden snakes and the lizards are like this big like i mean you'll see different size lizards but like, and i'm out in the desert every weekend and i haven't had any encounters like face to face again i would move if i did um and then to address it not cooling off in the evenings um so you'll get that for about two months out of the year where 
July, August, like doesn't really cool off too much in the evening. It, it's coolest in the morning. So if you're planning on, you know, taking your pets on a walk, I would, I would go mornings, but you know, I can sacrifice two months out of the year for pretty much perfect weather the rest yeah. of the year. Yeah. And the, the other interesting point is mosquitoes. So anybody that lives in the Pacific West or the Midwest or pretty much anywhere outside of the desert, it seems like mosquitoes just kind of come standard. I don't remember last time. Well, in fact, we don't own any any bug spray, like any mosquito spray. And you could not survive a Midwestern summer without without having to put on some kind of mosquito repellent, and mosquito I, spray. I would not do okay because they attack me like crazy. And then I like, I don't know if I'm like allergic, but you're, I'll get like welts and I have it for like, I'll have it for like <laughs> three months and just itching like crazy. So no, thank you. Heidi said, why the pay solo? Um, that kind of goes back to that point that a lot of entry-level jobs, unfortunately, don't pay as much. And I've also noticed that uh, medical field, so nurses and any kind of support staff in the medical industry does not tend to make as much in Southern Utah as they would in Nevada, California, or pretty much anywhere outside of the state. Not sure why. I think there used to be, and a lot of corporations are still kind of sticking to the idea that the cost of living in St. George or Southern Utah in general is a little lower than the surrounding areas, which it is. But unfortunately, the current economy and cost of everything is not not supporting that anymore. Um, so some some folks with entry level pay are, are definitely you could find yourself struggling. So multiple jobs or side hustles, whatever it takes. Sharon said, people have how many children? And again, those are those are the top commonly asked questions that people uh, wish they asked before they moved here. Yes, people have a lot of children here. It is uh, it's a local culture. Uh, Southern Utah is predominantly LDS in faith, and it is it is common for people to have but a the, lot of children. But the number of children people are having nowadays in general are going down and down and down. Like my grandma's one of 13. My mom is one of seven, and she had my, five, and then it just goes down, down, down. My down. dad is one of 17. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's – and, you know, so all of our friends have, like, maybe three, four, which to me that's a lot. So um, let's see. Luann, I moved here so long ago, but I didn't anticipate the growth and prices of homes. Unfortunately, that is what happened with growth over the last, and actually, if we look at the numbers, um, St. George has been the top of the fastest growing metro areas for the last seven years, I want to say. But over the last three years, our population has grown quite a bit. I think we grew by nearly 40,000 uh, in our population and supply versus demand um, in a free market. Unfortunately, that drives the prices of homes. But I also feel like a lot of people failed to note that the cost of real estate had increased quite a bit pretty much anywhere in the nation. Even even the areas where you used to be able to purchase affordable housing are really kind of no longer a thing. And I don't think anyone anticipated it, honestly, because if you even did for a second, you would have you would have bought five years ago, three years ago. Yeah. And we're just kind of going down this list list. We're not going to go through all 183 comments. Um, I will post a link to this thread if you guys are curious and if you're thinking about moving into the area joining this facebook page might be a good idea because you, you might learn some stuff or if you have any questions it's a great like it's a great um page to go and ask any questions that you might have unanswered um john said how come everything shuts down at 10 p.m on the weekends some of us are night owls and like to do things later that's that's a good question well, as uh, that was us before before we had a before baby. we had a baby and yeah. two bulldogs, yeah, yeah, yeah really, <laughs> it, it's kind of interesting, I, and I feel like with the recent growth, we could really benefit from having some places that are twenty four seven or open later. Mm -hmm. But really, it seems like most places here do shut down pretty early. So if you're if not nightlife is a big priority, I would say uh, frequent trips to Vegas might be the way to go because. Mm -hmm. St. George after 10, it's pretty quiet. Yeah. Okay, Tori, with traffic signals and street crossovers, took some getting used to. 
So left turn on red was a new one for me. Nicole said, I don't know. I don't feel like it's that new. Well, I guess well, some uh, left turn just... after stop. Yeah, a lot yeah. of a lot of places prohibit that. Okay. Uh, Tori also said the street names like East 850 South 900 Circle. Yes, I struggle with that one all the time. As a real estate agent showing houses, I try to memorize some of the addresses. And I there's no way that my brain could hold. Like, especially if you look at a handful of different addresses. It's not like 500 South Main Street. It's like East 850 South 900 Circle. Normally, they don't start off with a direction. They and start off with a number, direction, number, direction. And I've, I've had this conversation with a couple of locals that seem to make sense of the city blocks. Uh -huh. um, most of Utah is that way, really not just St. George. Like Salt Lake is that way, Cedar City is that way. But these number, number streets. And another thing that I'd like to add to that is that um, there are quite a few roundabouts. And it seems like they're not as common in the U.S. at least, in, in like most cities just have four-way intersections, but St. George has a lot of roundabouts. So if, if roundabouts are a challenge for you and you plan on moving here, it might be a good time to practice the right of way and how to drive through roundabouts. Um, one, of the, one of the main concerns, um, one of the other comments, somebody said that, you know, how did people survive without knowing how to drive so long? I can't find a comment now, but um, I find it ironic that I tend to agree. And I think that's a common complaint for just about any area. Uh, if you jump on any of these discussion boards in just about any city in America, you will find that somebody is complaining about bad drivers. And as the population begins to mix, you have um, bad drivers from all walks of life. Some are in a hurry, some are never in a hurry. I made a mistake by making an age reference, never again. Um, in one of our previous really, videos. It has nothing to do with age. It's literally... Just the demographic more so. Like if you're not in a hurry, if if I'm always in a hurry and somebody else is not in a hurry, yeah. they tend to do 10 under the speed limit on the interstate. But but think about all the people that are distracted by their devices too. Like yeah. that's terrifying. Yeah, that's true. So just be careful, everyone. Pay attention. Yeah, Paul said, had no idea the drivers were so bad. I lived in Florida and I thought that they're the worst. No contest. <laughs> okay, Judy, we came from Phoenix for the co for the cooler weather and love it, especially the mornings. And the one thing we didn't realize was how many drivers think it's okay to run red lights. It's shocking. And we've lived in eight states, but we've adapted and wait a beat to go once the light turns green. That's probably a good idea. That's a safe practice for sure. And, you know, it's interesting because so many people – are moving here from cooler places typically because historically St. George has been kind of a sanctuary for um, snowbirds. A lot of people would buy here second homes to escape Midwestern winters or winters from the Northeast or wherever, wherever they have a second home from. But as of late, we have been meeting a lot of people that are moving here from like Arizona, uh, New Mexico, or other parts of the country where it gets even hotter and stays hotter. Um, so it's kind of cool that, you know, everything, everything is by contrast, but again, bad drivers. So I'm not alone with this statement. Okay. Brian, is there anywhere to get a drink and also dance to some music? Um, looks like six people replied. Let's see. John Mesquite is what I found out. Let's see. One and only bar on St. George Boulevard. It's no longer hmm. true. No, not unless you go for elderly 80s night or... Millennial mo techno night. What is that? I don't know. We never, we never go there. Balcony one. So there's uh, there's actually sev several bars here. There's, Yeah, so there's like the spiritual parlor, the hive, that fire station one, the one and only. Yeah, yeah so that's, like <clears throat> that's, a, that's a common concern. A lot of people think, a lot of people associate... Utah in general with Mormon religion, and it is against uh, Mormon religion to drink alcohol. However, our population has become quite diverse, and there are, <clears throat> as uh, as Melissa mentioned, uh, there are quite a few full uh, liquor license bars that exist in St. George now, and there are certainly a few places where you could go out and dance and grab a drink. Mesquite uh, is also a great option. 
And of course, Las Vegas. Julie said, I did not realize how important good dining, entertainment, not Disney, socializing and decent shopping were. The options for dining have gotten a lot better. Um, I have to agree. You know, St. George is a phenomenal place to live, but some of the things that you may be used to from living in a big city, like even even comparing it to Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, Chicago, um, anywhere around large metro areas in California, there are some things that are lacking here. Um, you know, the, the amount of entertainment, and it really depends on some lifestyle changes, I guess. Some people like to go out and drink for entertainment. Um, here in Southern Utah, most of your entertainment consists of doing things outdoors, doing things um, out on the trails. You know, if you're into any form of off-roading, biking, hiking, a lot of people here are very fit. A lot of people here are into fitness because I think it kind of stems down from uh, really doing that for fun, doing that for entertainment. Uh, and that really kind of comes with the territory because if you if you live in the Midwest and you don't drink, you're going to have no social life. Everything is based around that. But if you're trying to escape from that, maybe lack of that form of entertainment really kind of socially forces you to do other things. Because if you're going to get together with friends, you're going to go out and you're going to go on a hike, go ride motorcycles, go boating, swimming, fishing, do all of these things that do not require for you to be under the influence in order to be able to maintain a conversation. Um, shopping, that's, that's a big one. We usually do all of our major shopping online or in Las Vegas because your options here are still few and far between, but our mall is in the process of being revamped. So that's getting a lot better. Yeah. It's definitely growing. Tons of boutiques are constantly popping up and I haven't ever, that's never really been like a concern for me. I don't know. I'm not like huge on fashion, but I'm, I'm fine to go to Vegas like a couple times a year and I'm. Yeah. Who needs to shop every day? Um, just plan ahead because I feel like a lot of like last minute things where I know some people are used to, you know, maybe they have a dinner party that they just got invited to and they need to go pick up a last minute cocktail dress or a pair of shoes. Don't have that luxury here. There are options, but they're not going to be amazing. I mean, you're not, you don't have Nordstrom's, you don't have uh, any like big fashion malls, but there are, I mean, if you're in a pinch, you could get something, but shopping locally has been a little bit of a struggle. We have high hopes for our new mall that's actually getting revamped and built on. It's It's been looking pretty cool. Sadly, a lot of things are moving to online anyway, so. Yeah, and that's part of the era that we're in. Um, a lot of retailers are minimizing their overhead by doing mostly online retail and you have it next day. Okay. Alana, bugs, scorpions, and snakes, do they show up often? Thank goodness they don't. Yeah, I'd be I'd be out of here. <laughs> I think uh, to Alana's concern, I'm in the same boat. Um, I'm, I'm sure so is any reasonable human being. We have some friends that uh, have snakes, scorpions, and spiders as, as pets. Um, that's not us. But um, overall, if you eliminate the source of their food, which is other bugs, that is something that you know, they, they have no reason to be on your property. So regular quarterly pest control. Some people do inside and out. We never spray the inside of our house, never have any issues. Uh, the exterior is an absolute must. And if, if bigger pests don't have any food on your property, they're certainly going to go elsewhere. I think this is it. We just kind of picked some of the most interesting comments, but we'll we'll post a link to this thread in, in the description below this video. And additionally, folks, if you're if you're watching this video and you have some outstanding questions that haven't been answered in the scope of this, this has been kind of random. We would love to hear from you. What are some of the things that you are wondering about prior to your move to Southern Utah? Please drop them in the comments below. And of course, if you're even remotely considering moving into this area, please get a hold of Michonne or myself. We would absolutely love to be of service to you and we can get a hold of you. And the only mistake you can make is not contacting us and potentially moving into the wrong neighborhood for you, the wrong area for you, 
Um, I've lived here my whole life. Nick's been here for the last 10 years. So we are a great wealth of knowledge to help, you know, pick exactly what would be picture perfect for you and your family. Okay. Yeah, and really, if if you're looking to move anywhere in a state, our team covers the entire state of Utah. So whether it be southern Utah or northern Utah, just reach out to us, and we'll get one of our team members in touch with you. We specialize in helping people relocate to this area. We always try to bring you the most organic, up-to-date content that makes this move easy. So this is just the beginning.